Today, I'll be giving you the tutorial that will end all tutorials. I'll be teaching you everything about Ultimate Football, from getting rich to playing quarterback. By the end of this video, you will hopefully learn something new and become a pro. Let's get right into it. When you first enter the game, you're shown this opening screen. Then, click anywhere, and you are exposed to the main menu. This is where everything is. On the left, you will see the Play Games and Park Mode buttons. If you want a more realistic experience, which is more similar to Football Fusion, I'd recommend clicking this one since it's the most normal gameplay, and you can just jump right into it. If you are more of a grinder and you want to grind with your friends, I'd recommend Park Mode. Park has two 2v2 fields, two 3v3 fields, and one 4v4 field in the middle. To queue for a game, you need to hop on one of these pads on the right. The middle group of pads is for crews and squads, which I'll talk about soon. When you hop on a pad, you will be queued for the next game. When the game in front of you ends, you will be teleported onto the field against the winner of the previous game. Now I'll go over crews and squads, which are a big feature of park mode. Crews are basically a way to easily be able to play with your friend. To create a crew, you have to buy a game pass for 100 robux, which in my opinion is completely worth it. Crews allow you to instantly hop on these pads, which are reserved for crews and squads. You can have up to 8 people in your crew. You can give your crew a name, description, one of 40 different icons to choose from. That's not it. The game also keeps track of your crew's record, streak, previous games, and stats. You can also get exclusive crew rewards, which are defined by how much XP you contribute to the crew. The end reward, which is at 32,000 XP, is usually going to be an expensive amethyst. Squads are also very similar. Squads are pretty much the same thing, actually. You can create a squad and invite players, and that's about it. Once the squad creator leaves the game, the squad is disbanded permanently until you make a new one. This is a good way to play with people who are in your crew, or a cheaper option to cruise. And that's about everything Park has to offer. Next, I'll go over the Trade Hub. This button is located near the center of the main menu, and is exclusively for trading and buying items. When you first join the Trade Hub, you will spawn in a small village. The village has six buildings, all with special purposes. The trade hub building is where everyone hangs down. You can view who's in your server, who has which item, and most importantly, trade with other people. To trade with someone, you need to request a trade, and they need to accept it. Once you are in a trade, the game gives you and your fellow trader a private chat. You can request for them to add an item, and you can add items yourself. Once you two agree on a deal, you both need to submit the trade. If you don't like that person's inventory, you can cancel the trade. The auction house building, located right next to the trade hub building, is a big building dedicated to buying items with coins. When you enter the building, you sit down on a chair and you are introduced to, well, a lot. You are faced with six items being auctioned off. These six items are the closest six items to expiring. If you are looking for a certain item, the auction house is the place to be because there are thousands of items up for sale here. If you want to see if your desired item is for sale, just search it up in this box right here. Let's say if I wanted the gold animation kicking rocks. I just search it up here and look, there's a few being sold. The only problem is that these items are expensive and cost coins. Coins are the game's main currency and are earned through gameplay, park, etc. If you have enough coins, you can either put a bid on the item or buy it out for a more expensive price. Buying out the item automatically gives you the item, while bidding gives you a chance at the item unless someone else bids for more until the auction expires. While bidding gives you a chance at the item unless someone else bids for more before the auction expires. Once you bid on the item, it will show up in My Bids tab. If it disappears from there, it means you've been outbid or someone bought it out. If you're not here to buy, but you want to sell your items, you can go to the Sell tab and sell any item of your liking. You can set a price for the item, a buyout price, select the amount of time you want your auction to last, and post it. When picking a price, make sure to refer to the item's wrap, which basically means the recent average price at which the item was sold at. Remember that there's a 20% tax, which means if you sell an item for 100,000 coins, you'll only get 80,000. You can view all of your items that are being auctioned off in the My Auctions tab. I think I covered everything about the auction center. Now onto the other side of the village, the stores. These stores can only buy you clothing. You cannot buy clothes off of the auction house, so if you're looking for clothes, this is where you go. This includes the UF Team Store, Revolta, and Heisen. These stores sell 10-30 to 30 clothes and reshuffle every 3 hours. The only store over here that doesn't sell clothes is the Pack Vault, which only sells packs and game passes. Although, you can literally just buy packs from anywhere, thanks to this button. The trade hub also has two 3v3 fields, but you cannot make squads or use the crew feature here. It's just kind of a mid version of the park. It also has two quarterback gauntlets and two toss-up machines. I also wanted to include this tip in. You can get around the trade hub and the park by using this teleport button. 
That's all I have about the trade hub. Now back to the main menu. Right under the trade hub button, there's the friends button. This simply shows where all of your Roblox friends are at the moment. If you want to join them, you can hit the follow button. On top of the menu, there's the goals button. This is where your weekly goals are. Weekly goals are a set of goals that refresh every Friday at around midnight. You are given 10 goals, 8 of which you have to complete. When you complete these goals, you can claim a pack which gives you one of the 6 possible limited items for that week. These are an extra challenge that you can do when you're grinding the game and you get a pretty good reward. The final button on this play tab, located in the bottom right, is the practice hub. Upon joining, you are shown a field with an indoor facility which has a quarterback gauntlet, 2 kicker minigames, and 2 toss-up minigames. This is the spot to go if you want to improve your skills. On the big field, you can spawn a ball and toss it around with your friends. Although, no one really goes to this game mode, but I think it's pretty underrated if you're new to the game. Moving over to the second tab, labeled as Store. This is where you can get packs, redeem codes, buy the season pass, etc. When you click on the Items Packs button, you are shown various packs. I'd recommend not buying packs since the odds are not in your favor, and you can literally buy an Amethyst on the market for less than 100,000 coins. The only time you can get away with buying packs is if you're just starting out because they're a way of getting a good amount of items to trade, but after that you shouldn't be buying them. Next to the Item Packs button, we have the Redeem a Code button. This, this is, well, where you redeem codes. Codes are posted very often in the Ultimate Football Discord server and on their Twitter. The link to their Discord server will be in the description. I also occasionally post these codes on my YouTube Shorts. Also, every Sunday night at 6.30pm Pacific Time, there is a code posted which has a limited amount of uses. The code is announced about an hour before and right when the clock strikes 6.30, you can enter it to receive an untradeable item. Note that item packs and codes can be bought and redeemed from anywhere within the game, not just the main menu. The Season Pass is one of the most important parts of the game. I'm going to give a very in-depth explanation about it. Ready? The Season Pass is very similar to Fortnite's Battle Pass. The Season Pass refreshes every new season and gives you rewards as you level up. You can level up by doing pretty much anything gameplay related. The final reward is at 100 overall and is usually a diamond. That is, if you have the Season Pass. Despite its steep price at 800 Robux, it is 100% worth it. If you take a look at the top row of the Season Pass, it's pretty mid. You get like no Amethyst, maybe one or two Limiteds, and nothing much else. Then when you look at the bottom row, oh lord, that's a lot of items. In Season 4, there are 5 whole Diamonds on the Pass, and there will be even more in Season 5. There are also over 10 Amethysts and countless limited. Another massive perk of having the season pass is that if you don't finish the season in time, you can always go back. Let's say you're a 95 overall on season 4, but season 5 drops tomorrow. There is no need to rush because you can always re-equip the season 4 later, which you can't do without the season pass. Another small benefit of buying the season pass is that when you complete it, you get a cool kid badge next to your name in chat. Wow, that was a lot. Under the Season Pass button are the Game Passes, I'll tell you which ones to buy. There are 6 Game Passes as of now, I'll skip the Season Pass cause, well, I already went over that. Position Priority, this one depends. What this Game Pass does is if you and John Doe both have one vote for quarterback, but you have this Game Pass and he doesn't, you have priority and will become quarterback. It's 500 Robux which is an alright price. If you're a park warrior then I wouldn't recommend this because there's no voting in park. But if you love playing Publix as a quarterback or if you're a YouTuber like me, I'd recommend this. Extra inventory is an absolute no. All it does is gives you an extra 200 inventory slots. It's 500 Robux and you can literally just either quick sell your items or store them on an alt account. Note, this might not be allowed so I wouldn't suggest storing them on an alt. Trucking and Hitstick are completely worth it, I don't even need to explain. They're both very helpful and only cost a combined total of 600 Robux and they stay in your inventory permanently. If you didn't know, Truck allows you to plow through two people without getting tackled and lasts for about 2 seconds. And Hitstick allows you to absolutely destroy people and gives a higher chance at them fumbling. And it also beats out Truck, so if somebody trucks and you hit stick them if they're still gonna get tackled the three times team captain game pass is sort of in the middle i personally have it but i wouldn't recommend it although it only costs 250 robux so it's your choice and the game pass makes your odds three times as likely to become team captain those are all the game passes now on to one of the game's biggest features and most underrated features coin idling you can enter coin idling from anywhere in the game. Basically, when you enter here every 3 minutes, you get a certain amount of coins depending on a few things. The default amount is 50 coins, but if you have Roblox Premium, you get 65 coins. If you're a member of the Cloudburst Interactive Roblox group, you earn 60 coins. If you're both, you get 90 coins. 
I enter coin idling every single night as it is an easy way to earn coins. I've actually made over 2 million coins off of this. All you need to do is enter here before you go to sleep or before you go to school, plug in your device and turn the brightness all the way down and let it run. You won't get disconnected 95% of the time and your device will not overheat. This is in my opinion a very underrated feature of the game. Finally under the idle coins button there is simply just coins. Do not go here, you should not be buying coins for Robux as they are extremely overpriced and easy to earn anyways. I mean, I've made a thousand Robux worth of coins in one day. That says something. That's it for the store tab, now onto the customize tab. In the customize tab, you can edit your character, check out your inventory, customize playbooks, and change your settings. All of which can be done from anywhere in the game. On the left of your screen, there is a locker outfit and the street outfit. The locker outfit is exclusively used in regular gameplay. There are 8 tabs in the locker customizer. The avatar tab is dedicated to your skin color, number, height, weight, and jersey tag. You can use the outfits tab to make multiple outfits. Let's say I wanted to make a player that looks like Brock Purdy, but I want to save my original outfit. I can simply just create a new outfit and switch back to my old outfit anytime I want. You can create up to 25 outfits. For the actual customization, you can customize your face mask, shell, visor, eyes, mouth, mouthpiece, facial... Actually, you know what, I'm just not going to go over every item type, you get the point. Each item type is grouped into different tabs depending on where it goes on the body. On the other tab, you can change your ball texture, trail, and choose up to 4 different animation slots. If you leave one blank, it'll give you a random animation. In the actions tab, you can change your favorite team and uniform. Under that, you can refresh your character, clear all your outfits, reset the camera, and enter the green screen, which I sometimes use for thumbnails. The street locker is also pretty similar, aside from a few exclusive items. You can also change your street banner in the actions tab. Now we have the three other buttons, inventory, playbooks, and settings. The inventory tab simply shows your inventory. The settings tab has a few important settings, such as customizing your controls and various graphics settings. The playbooks tab is somewhat important. I went over this on a recent video where I made the best playbook, but I don't mind talking about playbooks again. When you click on the button, you are shown two options, offensive playbooks and defensive playbooks. Defensive playbooks mean absolutely nothing unless you're a league player, although offensive playbooks do have a purpose. When you click on the offensive playbooks button, you are shown something similar to this. To create a playbook, click the button with a big plus on it. From there, you can customize formations and routes. It's very important to have as many routes as possible on your playbook because when a wide receiver hops on one of those pads, it gives them a noticeable speed boost. You can also share your playbook with other people. To share your playbook, go to the sharing tab and click publish and create key. This will give you a six digit code which can be used by anybody to download your playbook. If you want to download someone else's playbook, simply type the code into the import shared playbook field. If you want to download mine, enter this code on screen. That's it for the customize tab, now onto the final tab, the community tab. The only thing that needs an explanation is private servers which are insanely advanced and very helpful when it comes to leagues and pickup games. First you need to create a private server which can be done by hitting the button with a big plus on it. When you first make your server, you have a ton of options which are pretty straightforward. The cool thing is, once your server is created, you can keep it forever unless you delete it. You don't need to make a new private server every time you want to join one. You can make one, name it, and call it a day. You have total control over everything from server size to teams to admins. And bam, that's every single corner of Ultimate Football covered. Oh wait, how the heck do I play quarterback? Now it's time to give a brief explanation on how to play every single position in Ultimate Football, starting with quarterback. Quarterback is by far the hardest position in football. I don't really have a straight up explanation on how to play it, but I do have a few tips. When it comes to diming, it's all skill and it's all about practice. No player can teach anybody how to dime right away. All I'd say is to use between 75 and 100 power depending on how far your receiver is. The more you get used to the position, the better you'll get at diming. If you're throwing shorter routes like slants, I'd recommend using 90 to 100 power as that will allow the ball to get there quicker and give the defender less time to catch up. Remember to always lead the receiver and aim a little bit over his head, but not too much. When you're under pressure, just try to cut away from the defender. If you take a look what I do, I usually just try to cut and juke the defender when he's least expecting it. Also, remember to jump when you're throwing the ball as it gives you a lower chance of getting swatted. If you want to fade the ball on like a two-point conversion, use 60 to 65 power, drop back a few steps, and throw it at this angle. If you want to bomb, ramp up the power to 100, move your camera to face as high up as possible, and click anywhere from here to here. Running back. 
No one really plays running back, but I do have a few tips on mixing. If you have truck, avoid using it in a big cluster of people. Truck only works on one to two people and only lasts for about two seconds. Abuse spin move. When you're trying to get to the side, I'd suggest using spin move as it sort of launches you in that direction. Although, don't use it if you're about to get tackled because it increases fumble risk. Follow your blocks. Trust me, follow the blocks and I assure you you'll get an extra 10 yards. Okay, yeah, that's all I know about mixing. Wide receiver. When you're trying to burn someone, try using this technique shown. It works occasionally and is very effective when it does work. If you want to slant, I'd suggest lining up closer to the middle of the field so you can cut in both directions. Usually try to cut more than once when you're in a circle with many defenders. If you're in a situation where you need to toss, here's the technique that I use almost every time. I start off by being a little bit in front of where I'm supposed to be. I use shift lock. Then I time my jump sort of early and maybe try to get a boost off of someone's head. Then I do a full 360, which I don't know if it's like a habit or it actually helps me, but boom, I moss a bunch of kids easily. If you want to mag the ball, use this technique where you go into shift lock, rotate your camera about 90 degrees, jump, and dive. It gives me an extra boost of reach occasionally and is very helpful. If you want some help reeling, here are two clips of two simple techniques. Moving over to defense, here are some tips on how to play D-line. I suggest by lining up right in front of the quarterback and using shift lock. What I like to do is try to read the quarterback. I try to predict his next move. If you execute this correctly, it'll work 90% of the time. If the quarterback has a tendency to run, I wouldn't suggest doing that and play more of a contained style rush like this. Speaking of contain, if you have a second rusher, I'd recommend that you both choose one side to rush from and don't let the quarterback get to the outside of you. This will force him to drop back super far, thus putting him under more pressure and increasing your odds of recording a sack. When you're playing defensive back in a public, you're most likely running a man-to-man -man coverage. When the receiver you're guarding is at the line of scrimmage, ready to take off and run his route, play about 5 yards off the line. This is so he won't be able to burn you easily. If he lines up closer to the outside of the field, Guard closer to the inside. This will block him from cutting to the middle, and is a strategy I use frequently. Although, if he's lined up in the middle, don't let him burn you. It's really that simple. Oh my god, we're almost done. The last position I'll be going over is kicker. This is a pretty straightforward position. When you're kicking a field goal, leave the angle as it is. When it comes to your kick power and kick height, click the little meter. Then, the tick mark will move across the meter. Make sure to click a little bit before the little thingy hits the perfect spot, because there is a bit of a delay. Other than that, it's pretty simple. The last part of this tutorial will be a quick recap on coins, XP, and wrap. Coins are the game's main currency and are earned through gameplay, park, trade hub, kicker minigames, toss-up minigames, quick selling items, selling items through the auction center, weekly goals, season pass, coin idling, robux, community events, I don't even know, there's probably even more ways, but I think I covered enough for you to realize that they can be obtained pretty much everywhere. Coins can be used to buy items and packs. XP is also earned through gameplay, park, trade hub gameplay, and weekly goals. It contributes to crew rewards and the season pass. It cannot be bought or traded. Wrap is a very misunderstood concept. No, it is not a currency. It cannot buy you anything. Wrap stands for Recent Average Price and specifically means the average amount of coins that a certain item was sold for in the last 10 instances. I don't really have a better way to explain it. If you're too good for Publix, there's also a ton of competent leagues. To join them, you need to join the Ultimate Football Discord server, link in the description. There's a channel called Promos with so many leagues to join. Alright, all right, there you go. That, I, I covered everything. Like, l literally everything. So no more tutorials. Peace out.